Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, Fungus Frank here, and today I'm going to be explaining how I make AI planes for you guys. Stick around, and we'll jump right into it. So you guys have seen AI planes on the channel before, and I now have a video and a lot of people asking on how I ended up creating these. So now I have not updated the way I make these, and I believe there's a way I can to make it so much simpler. Because my original designs like this one here, this is a simple bomber that I made some time ago. And this uses angle sensors to control the flap wings. And essentially when the plane rolls one direction too far, this angle sensor gets a detection and corrects itself by sending an input to the wings and levels the plane out. And it does that on both wings as well as on the pitch and the yaw. But I believe now that we have the gyro stabilizers, we can make an AI plane that is so much simpler that I believe almost anybody can do this. So I'm gonna get rid, I've actually gotta keep that weight there just cause I think that's where the plane's gonna, where the plane's gonna lie. So I usually use angle sensors for my planes and I'm going to go ahead and switch to the gyro stabilizers. So essentially, I wanna do two of each and because this plane is super light, it shouldn't take too much to keep it level. I'm gonna up the strength to these. We'll just do a starting test at four. And the only other controls I have programmed right now is the rudders. Whenever I essentially toggle the acceleration, which is what I have, the, the propellers are set to toggle my right trigger. So they'll just run and run at one speed on both of them once I click the trigger once. And same with the vertical stabilizers. They are on a delay of 10 seconds. And when I toggle them, they will actuate towards uh, the positive side, which is going to be green. So this plane is essentially going to be constantly turning to the left. And to keep its altitude, I have an altitude sensor controlling a gimbal jet in the nose. So anything below 150 meters, the gimbal jet's going to fire. So even right now, as we're sitting here, you can hear the gimbal jet working. I'm going to go ahead and hop out and actually line ourselves up with a little bit of a better runway. I just wanted to see how these gyro stabilizers function because the original set up the sensors work it does keep it level i just want to know how how good this functions i mean this keeps it very stable i mean this thing so this plane used to roll actuate and like it would constantly try to be correcting itself and it wouldn't fly perfectly level like this i'm curious if the gyros are too strong and i think i have a way to test this what i'm going to do is set up some dynamite on the wing just to see if it can overcorrect if like say the plane is damaged like we're shooting at it it's losing pieces now let's actually simulate that with right trigger and we'll delay that we'll do 15 seconds that way it has a few seconds to turn and then we'll see if the gyro stabilizers are too strong and if this plane continues to fly more than likely we might lose a lot of surfaces of lift so it's still going to fall into the water but i think this would be a good little gauge to see if we can lower the strength of the gyro so we at least get a more satisfying crash like if it loses a wing it'll at least still roll and you know barrel roll into the earth like we like most planes when we shoot them down that's what we want to see we're you know we're wanting to see the action of the plane spiraling towards the earth so i hopefully we can get oh wow that causes a lot of drag so it should blow up here soon i mean yeah that's not flying and that's that's crashing okay but it, again it still keeps fairly level i think the one dynamite is like crazy it's strong too i'm gonna place it a little further I don't want it too far to the back of the plane because I noticed it even blew up the, the tail, which is kind of satisfying. But I'm gonna lower the strength of all of these. I'm gonna bring these down, let's say two and a half. Kind of a large adjustment, 1.5 strength adjustment, but let's uh, go ahead and just see what this does. I wait for the engines to spool up. Now that we're taking off, I just wanna see it work as intended. All right, so it's leveling off. Huh, that's hard to kind of gauge. I think we need a longer delay. Let's get this. I blew up so prematurely, I think. I think I want to wait till this is moving a little bit higher. So we'll get this 
hopefully climb to its right altitude. Do 30. 30 second delay. And we'll actually give it a runway so it can gain some speed before leaving the carrier. There we go. All right, go ahead. It's gonna be like a jump scare when this thing goes up. It's been flying for a little bit. I mean, 30 seconds is, oh, there it goes, okay. So it does roll into the earth. You can shoot it down. I just, I don't think it's as satisfying as watching it, you know, spiral down. That's the only thing with this, the gyro stabilizers that I've noticed. Unless I can lower the strength even more because it's a fairly balanced plane. Let's say 1.5 on each. So that should give us a total of three control for each vertice of rotation. Go ahead and, that's a big word. I used the big word there, vertice. You like that? Yeah, I like that. It's a good word. All right, go ahead and go ahead and start the plane up. Let's see what it does here. All right, so the gimbal jet's working. It's pushing our nose up. Ooh, we're a little close to those bombs. That's all right. So you notice we already have a little bit more of a sag. It's not flying perfectly level, but it is still flying without a wing. Oh yeah, that's rolling. Okay. We can get away with that. I think it's just about like the strength that you adjust it to. I think no matter what, once it loses enough pieces of wing, it's going to crash because it's going to lose center of, uh, you know, areas of lift. So the, essentially once the wing gets damaged, we're going to have less lift in one side. I think no matter what, especially if we say we crank all these all the way max, it's going to stay perfectly level, but I think it's still going to fall out of the air. And I don't know why I got rid of the dynamite. Give me a second here. I got to get that back. There we go. Okay. Gonna grab these. We're gonna bump that all the way to max strength. Uh, make sure before we take off, is the setup still? Yeah, okay. Let's give it a little bit of runway, and I wanna test it with all max strength, and you'll see that it has no give. It's not gonna roll left, right, up or down. This thing may not even get lift because of the gimbal jet may not be strong enough to push its nose high enough. But I mean, this thing is perfectly level. I mean, you want a good level flying plane, this is it. And if you're not a big fan of the rolling and crashing into the water like I am, but you'll see like it still crashes, but I mean this plane is not, it's not, <laughs> I mean it falls out of the sky, kinda. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's more or less build a preference in this case, myself included, I definitely try to enjoy, I enjoy when the planes crash, they roll and they end up like spiraling towards the earth and like dramatically that to me is satisfying so i think the 1.5 will work let's see how low we can go before we lose stability so all the gyro stabilizers down to one strength it's going to give us a total of two for each vertice because there's two gyro stabilizers and let's give this a test This is going to be the weakest setting we've tried for this. And I know at 1.5, it was listing to the right a little bit while, while turning. So we'll see if this has enough strength to keep it from doing that. So this is turning. It has a very right leaning list. And essentially is kind of flying straight because of it. It doesn't have quite enough strength to keep itself level. So it's, it's, it's really not doing enough with the two strength. I mean, with that broken, I mean, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely crashing satisfyingly. I mean, it's doing everything else. So it's just trying to find that happy medium. I think 1.5 is going to be our best bet. So a total of three strength for everything gives us that happy medium, 1.5. Here we go. Oh, I might not have given it enough runway again. Ooh, this will be very close. The bombs might blow itself up. Oh yeah, definitely it's gonna blow itself up. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's very close, okay. I was very nervous about that one. I was, I was on the edge of my seat for that one, a little pucker. All right, loses its wing. 
Yeah, no, it, it's rolling into the earth. If I gave it enough height and enough time to essentially get damaged, let's go ahead and we'll launch this because it is fully automated. We'll launch this and shoot at it with uh, one of the planes I have. I think we'll just use the Corsair for time's sake. Go ahead and hop in here. We can actually zero in our guns. You can see I can point them closer together or further apart depending on the range of the plane. Let's go ahead and see if we can get some damage on this build here. Alright. Let's see here. I want to try to shoot one of its wings off if I can be precise. There goes its wing. Yeah, it crashes to the earth. It rolls. Let's go ahead and compare this to the original one with angle sensors and see if there's really a difference in performance and also how it crashes. So this is the same build and everything. Everything weighs the same, acts the same. The only difference is instead of gyro stabilizers, we're using angle sensors to control surfaces on the wings. Nice little Tokyo Drift takeoff. See if we can get some... I just want to get some wing damage. I'm hitting it in the body here. Alright, there's a little pieces of wing. Yeah, essentially crash the same. I didn't make it sever an entire wing, but they do function the same. I guess that's going to be the whole new way I make AI planes. So before I was going to make a video explaining how my B-17 functioned, which I use angle sensors to control the vertices of the plane. So that controls its pitch, its yaw, and its roll. And that's what I have here. And this is, I built this some time ago, way before I knew how to do the uh, single vertical stabilizer. So it looks a little different. But in this case, yeah, I use angle sensors to control flaps. So in this case, plane rolls to the left, flaps activate, rolls it to the right, and then vice versa on the other side. So if the plane rolls too far to the right, the flaps activate and roll it back to the left, correcting it. And within a small little margin window, you'll see the angle width on this is 180 and set off by five degrees. So there's about a 10 degree window where the plane will just kind of hover in its zone without having any inputs. And I think it's just a bit of an older design. Now that we have the gyro stabilizers, I think there's ways that I can make significantly easier AI planes, which we actually showcased today. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and tried my best to explain it, which I understand sometimes these concepts can be a little bit difficult to convey what it is I'm trying to say. And that's why I was a little hesitant on posting this, but I know a lot of people had asked for it and how I've done it. So this hopefully explains it and clears it up for you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.